Hey everyone, we will see the development of generalized function which was actually invented to give a solid mathematical foundation to delta function. The delta function was introduced by Dirac in 1930. Although he introduced it as a mathematical tool for quantum mechanics, we can understand it in classical terms also. To understand it we consider a classical example of a rod of non-uniform thickness. We introduce a mass density function rho x which gives mass per unit length of the rod at a point. The mass of any section of the rod A to B is obtained by integrating the mass density function. This method works perfectly fine for a continuous distribution of mass along the rod. But if the mass is concentrated at finite points instead of being continuously distributed, then the above description breaks down. Now if a unit mass is concentrated at the point say x equals zero and we consider negligible mass at all other parts of a slim wire, such that if we find out the mass of any section which doesn't contain the point zero, then it is zero. And for any section which includes the point zero gives us a unit mass. This makes sense physically but mathematically it is insane, since there is no such classical functions which satisfy the above conditions. From the physical point of view, the mass density function is zero everywhere except at x equals zero, where it is infinite. Because a finite mass is concentrated in zero length. So Dirac just introduced a function del x, having just those properties we have seen. This delta function is an example of generalized function. In our next video we will give the definition of generalized functions, and analyze it properly with more examples. A solid foundation was built by Sobolev in 1936 and Schwartz in 1950s. The theory of generalized functions that they developed can be used to replace ordinary analysis, and in many ways simpler. Some of the merits of generalized functions are that they are differentiable unlike the ordinary function we know, and, also term-by-term -term differentiation and integration is possible without worrying about uniform convergence. As with ordinary sequence of functions these are not possible unless they converge uniformly. But also there comes a price, which we have to pay for defining and developing such functions. Now if you are still confused with generalized functions, you can think of them as ordinary functions with some additional properties along with them, one such basic difference that I can tell you now is that, an ordinary function maps numbers to numbers but, a generalized function maps functions to some particular number. Some limitations are that, generalized functions cannot be multiplied with itself or with a discontinuous function. Thanks for watching.